Hi, I'm Cat Cosplay and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to sculpt using thermoplastic, in particular a thermoplastic called Thebra. So if you'd like to learn how you can make little props like this out of thermoplastic, keep watching. I was recently commissioned to make an Elvira cosplay for a friend of mine, which included the dress, belt, and dagger that she has that's in her belt. I originally was going to make this out of foam clay, but I needed a pretty quick turnaround on this costume. And foam clay takes a while to dry, especially if it's laying on a surface and got a lot of surface area in contact with the table. So instead of foam clay, I decided to make this little dagger out of a thermoplastic called Thebra. This thermoplastic in particular is very malleable. It doesn't have a lot of filler material in it. So it's basically like a putty that you can heat up and sculpt and sand and turn into a prop. The first thing that I did was I made a dagger template for myself. I looked at a bunch of reference images and drew one out on a piece of paper. I ended up tracing that onto a couple different pieces of paper and making a couple different templates. This is because when you use thermoplastic, it is sticky and it can stick to things. So I didn't want the thermoplastic to stick to this. And then if I needed another copy of this for whatever reason, I would basically have destroyed my only copy. So I just wanted to make sure that I had enough copies of this thing just in case of catastrophic failure. When working with Thebra, you're going to want to work with it on a non-stick surface. Basically, I'm going to be working with it on a silicone baking mat because it is super sticky. Thebra is more sticky than Warbla is or Wonderflex is. So if you don't want it sticking to your desk and making a huge mess, work with it on something like a silicone baking mat or wax paper or baking paper or parchment paper. Or I have even occasionally like put petroleum jelly on my desk. I don't recommend that. It's really weird and disgusting. It gets everywhere, but in, in, in a, at a pinch that works. Once you have your template, it is time to start laying the foundation of your sculpt, which means I'm going to heat up the thermoplastic. I'm going to heat up the Thebra. I have Thebra scraps from previous builds. I'm just going to use scraps. So you don't need to have a lot of thermoplastic. You just need a little bit. If you have it left over from something else, it's great. And I'm going to heat that up and start placing that within the bounds of my template. So I've cut my template out and I am going to lay down a layer of thermoplastic and go from there. This dagger that I'm building is flat backed. I only need one side of it to have detail on it. And actually for the purposes of this costume, having it lay flat against the belt is actually better. It's going to look better. It's going to just be totally fine for the purposes of this, this costume. So it doesn't need to have two sides. I cut out two different templates in case I wanted to make either side of this thing to make both sides of this thing. And if I had made both sides, I would have eventually smooshed them together to make this thing have two sides. But I decided it only needed details on one side. It didn't need to have all the details on the hilts and whatever. It, it didn't need it. So I didn't do it. But if you want to, you can make a double sided prop using this method. I wouldn't recommend using thermoplastic to make very large props in this manner. This is basically a solid thermoplastic piece and that can get pretty heavy pretty quickly. This is great for small props or small pieces. If you don't have a 3D printer like me, I don't have a 3D printer. So I need to make this, I need to make this pretty quickly. And I have thermoplastic, so I'm going to use it. I'm laying down a sort of base layer of thermoplastic. And the nice thing about Thebra is it works at a lower temperature than 
Warbler does, so it doesn't have to get quite as hot to be able to work with it for it to be malleable. And this is also nicer because it's not going to burn your fingers as much. If you are worried about your fingertips, please wear protective gear. I often use rubber tipped gloves or rubberized gloves when working with thermoplastic because it does get pretty hot. I have uh, burned off my fingertips many times, so I'm kind of used to it. Once I have the base layer of thermoplastic that I need and kind of I've filled in the template, I'm going to go ahead and start to figure out the details, figure out where stuff is going to go, what else I need to do, blending the seams. and. I'm going to do this using sculpting tools. I have a set of sculpting tools that's for sculpting with say clay, but this also works for sculpting thermoplastic. So I'm going to start refining the shape, putting in details, adding things. And if it's not totally perfect, it's okay because you can sand thermoplastic. This is something that I didn't really think about when I started working with thermoplastics, but they are totally sandable. And what I'm going to do once I'm fairly happy with the size and the shape is use my Dremel tool to sand and refine this sculpt after I'm done sculpting it. I do my initial sculpt, take off some excess material, and then I am ready to sand this down. I'm going to be using a couple of different tips. I'm actually not using a sanding barrel because it's a big barrel for something that's this small. So I'm going to use some smaller stone grinding tips and work on refining the blade, sanding down some seams, taking off some excess material, and just basically going to get to a point where I think it looks like the reference image, taking away anything that I'm not happy with. If you accidentally sand off too much, guess what? You can heat it up and add back. So that's the really awesome thing about working with thermoplastic in this manner. Using thermoplastic to do this is quite a bit of a time saver. If I accidentally remove too much with foam clay, if I sanded off too much, if I was doing this out of foam clay, I would have to, you know, add foam clay and then wait for it to dry, which can take 24 to 48 hours, and then go back and sand it again. With the Thebra, if I've made a mistake, I can heat this back up, add more material, sand it back down, and be done with the whole process in about 10 minutes. This whole sculpting process and sanding process only took about an hour and a half to two hours. So this is a really quick and easy way to make a small prop. If I had been 3D printing this, I would have had to design it in the 3D printing software and that's going to take quite a bit of time and then print this and that's going to take, I don't know, an hour maybe for something like this or two hours. So in terms of how long this takes versus other methods, this is I believe a quicker way to make small props like this or small pieces for your cosplay. Once I have this thing sculpted and sanded, I'm going to prime it. You can prime it with any sort of primer that you want. If you want to prime it with a spray on primer or even spray it with some sandable filler primer so you can get it even smoother. I'm going to go ahead and prime this with fabric mod podge. I also often use Hexflex brush on primers. I have a whole video on comparing some primers if you want to check that out. I'll link that in the cards up above. And then paint. I'm going to just be using some acrylics that I have and paint this thing. I didn't have, I didn't take footage of painting this, but you saw it in the intro, the paint on this thing. I also painted the back of this black so that there's nice, just solid color on the back of this. And that's it. It's like I said, it was not a very time intensive process. It was only about an hour and a half to two hours to build this and probably another hour to paint. So it was a nice, quick prop build. And 
I hope this is helpful for you for making small pieces for your cosplay or small props. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any additional questions about today's video, don't forget to leave a comment down below. If you liked the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and bell notification to be notified of the next time I put up a new video. Alright folks, I will see you in the next one.